You may already be aware of this, but if you're not, did you know that you could transact in the crypto markets either tax deferred or in some instances completely tax free? That's right. You have the ability with the right type of account structure in the right financial institution to complete crypto transactions entirely tax free. So we're going to talk about this and much more in today's program. Hi, everybody. I'm John Bowens, Director of Education and Investor Success here at Equity Trust. Equity Trust is a directed IRA custodian. We've been helping investors for many years initiate alternative investment transactions with their self-directed IRAs, Roth IRAs, and various other tax advantaged investment accounts. So the ability to diversify beyond just publicly traded stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, the ability to invest in a wide array of alternative investments, including, as what we're going to be talking about today, cryptocurrency. So first, let's talk about how cryptocurrency is treated from a tax perspective in a non-IRA environment. In just a moment, you're going to see that with a traditional IRA, your growth is tax deferred. You can be exempt from capital gains tax in each incremental year as you're trading cryptocurrency. And then with a Roth IRA, you're going to learn about the tax-free growth of the Roth IRA, meaning entirely eliminating any taxation going forward on your growth in that Roth IRA and assuming you follow all the rules and guidelines, all of the distributions tax-free. This is what I call compounding interest in the absence of taxation. We'll get into that in just a moment. But first, how is cryptocurrency treated in a non-retirement account environment? And you're going to start to see this erosion effect when taxes are incurred in trading cryptocurrency. Now, this dates back to 2014. In 2014, the IRS released Notice 2014-21, and this specifically referenced cryptocurrency. They refer to it as virtual currency being deemed personal property for tax-related purposes. So what does this actually mean? What this means is if you buy and sell cryptocurrency in a taxable environment, you will either be subject to short-term capital gains tax or long-term capital gains tax. Now, what's the difference? Well, let's say you buy a coin or cryptocurrency, you hold on to it for less than 12 months, and then you sell it and recognize a capital gain. At that point, that amount of capital gains will be subject to your ordinary income tax rate. So that could be quite substantial for some folks on today's call. That's short-term capital gains tax. It's based on your ordinary income tax rate. But then we look at what happens if you buy a cryptocurrency or coin and you hold on to it for greater than 12 months. Well, in this case, you would be subject to long-term capital gains tax rates. Now, long-term capital gains tax rates for lower income individuals, it's actually 0%. For most of, Amer most of Americans, it's 15%. And then for high income earners, it's 20%. Now, you do have to keep in mind that some states have a capital gain tax rate as well, so you want to make sure you look at your specific tax. Let me pause for a moment and mention that it's really, really important that you team up with a CPA or tax professional to navigate these various nuances. Everybody's situation is different. I am not here to provide any tax, legal, or financial advice, nor is Equity Trust Company nor do we provide advice or recommendations with respect to cryptocurrency. We don't endorse or recommend cryptocurrency. We simply provide the platform and the systems and the infrastructure and all of the digital connectivity so that if one wants to self-direct into cryptocurrency, they have a place to do that. Whereas most financial institutions right now are not going to allow you to use your IRA to invest in cryptocurrency. They don't have the pipes and plumbing, the knowledge, or understanding of or openness to do that. That's where Equity Trust can help you. And I'll talk about our system in just a few moments. Okay, so that's how taxes occur in a taxable environment when buying and selling cryptocurrency. Just remember the short-term versus long-term capital gains tax. Uh, let's do a quick example. Let's say you bought cryptocurrency, uh, let's just use $10,000. You bought $10,000 in cryptocurrency. This is just a hypothetical example. And let's say two years later, you sold said cryptocurrency for $20,000. So your capital gain is $10,000. Now that's long-term capital gains tax. 
And let's say that you're in one of the higher tax brackets and your capital gain tax rate is 20%. And then let's just use the example of having another 5% based on the state that you're in. So your total capital gain tax rate is 25% combined between state and federal. So 25% of $10,000 is how much? $2,500. So you make $10,000 in capital gains and $2,500 has to go to the IRS in the form of taxes, and then you keep the $7,500. This is the erosion effect that I was referring to. So now you only have $7,500 to be able to go out and reinvest into other assets. That might be different cryptocurrencies, that could be real estate, that could be stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ultimately wherever you wanna diversify that money but you have that erosion effect, the erosion effect of your compounding returns. Now, let's turn the page to a self-directed, let's use a Roth IRA. So let's say you buy that same cryptocurrency for $10,000 in a Roth IRA. A Couple of years later, you sell it for $20,000, you recognize a $10,000 capital gain. Well, in a Roth IRA, your capital gains are tax-free. So that entire $10,000, plus the $10,000 basis or principal flows back into your Roth IRA. So instead of having to write a check to the IRS for $2,500, that $2,500 stays in your Roth IRA. You don't have to report that as income because it's in your Roth IRA. It's no different than buying shares of a publicly traded company and then selling it for a capital gain, right? It's the same concept. So now you have that $20,000 in your Roth IRA and then you can reinvest that into other opportunities. This is what I call compounding interest in the absence of taxation. Now, let's break down the difference between a traditional and a Roth IRA. Not everybody has a Roth IRA. You're gonna learn that most people can have a Roth IRA if they go about it in the right way. So the difference between a traditional and Roth IRA, traditional IRA is also known as a pre-tax IRA. Most people are accustomed to having a 401k or 403b or TSP thrift savings plan or 457 deferred compensation or maybe pension, where when they were putting money in, they were getting tax deductions for it. And then your growth is tax deferred, which can be good from a compounding return perspective. But then eventually when you take money out after the qualified retirement age of 59 and a half, that's when you have to pay taxes. The analogy we always use in the industry is you either pay taxes on the seed or you pay taxes on the crop. So with a traditional IRA, you didn't pay taxes on the seed, so you have to pay taxes on the crop. So your 401ks, your other employer plans that are tax deferred, you can roll those over into a traditional IRA. And then by all means, if you wanted to trade in cryptocurrency with a traditional IRA, you could do that. Your capital gains would grow tax deferred. The growth of your account as a whole would grow tax deferred. And then eventually when you take money out after 59 and a half, you have to pay taxes. All right, that's the way that works. Some folks do still use a traditional IRA to invest in cryptocurrency because their objective is additional diversification. They want exposure to the crypto markets in their traditional IRA. But what about the Roth IRA? Because we talked about tax-free growth and a lot of people are very attracted to that example that I provided about the Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is the opposite of a traditional IRA. It is funded with after-tax dollars, it grows tax-free, and then when you take the money out of the Roth IRA after 59 and a half, you pay 0% tax. So what that means, going back to our example, is the capital gains from the sale of cryptocurrency in your Roth IRA is tax-free, and it continues to compound tax-free for the rest of your life. Imagine then leaving it to a child or grandchild, and they inherit the account tax-free. Imagine using that in your retirement years and not having to pay a single dime of tax. That could be pretty powerful, right, and profound. So what if you don't have a Roth IRA? What are your options? Well, option A is open a Roth IRA and make a contribution. Now you will learn in some of our other educational videos that if you make too much money, if you're over the modified adjusted gross income limits, you can't contribute directly to a Roth IRA. So those are instances where in order to have a Roth IRA, you first have to contribute to a traditional IRA and then convert over to a Roth IRA. This is known as a backdoor contribution. Or for those of you that have pre-tax money in a traditional IRA, an old 401k, you can simply convert some or all of that money from your traditional account into your Roth IRA. So going back to our hypothetical example, buying crypto for 10,000 
and then growing the account, let's say to 20,000 and then selling and recognizing a $10,000 capital gain. If you had $10,000 in a traditional IRA, you could potentially convert that $10,000 over into the Roth IRA. You would have to pay taxes at that time based on your effective tax rate. So let's say your effective tax rate at that time was 20%. So 20% of 10,000 is $2,000. So you pay $2,000, right? To convert the money, the 10,000 from the traditional to the Roth. Then you grow that to 20,000, you sell the cryptocurrency, you have a $10,000 capital gain, but because that's now in your Roth IRA, it's 100% tax free. So you don't have to write a $2,500 check to the IRS using our example before. You can preserve that $2,500 and you can use that for additional transactions. That's compounding interest in the absence of taxation at work in the cryptocurrency trading environment. All right, now what about the system in the infrastructure? Well, it's a pretty simple process. It's a three-step process. Step one is you would establish and fund your equity trust self-directed IRA. That could be either a traditional IRA again, or it could be a Roth IRA. You will learn, for those of you that maybe have a SEP IRA or simple IRA or even inherited IRA, those accounts would qualify as well. But we're just gonna say in this case, traditional or Roth IRA. So you open up your self-directed IRA and let's assume it's a Roth IRA and you move some money over and you convert it into a Roth IRA. All right, that's step one. And we have associates here at Equity Trust that can help you through that entire process and make it real easy. We'll make sure to put a link down below for you to be able to click and get more information on that. All right, once the account is open and funded, you're then going to log in to your online system through Equity Trust. And when you log into your online system, you're gonna see that there's a function or a feature for accessing the crypto trading platform. So Equity Trust, we have built a fully digit digitized, fully integrated system that allows you to trade in cryptocurrencies. And there are a variety of coins that are offered. So think of this like a trading platform in the public markets, stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, but it's for cryptocurrency transactions. So that's step two is accessing the platform. And then step three will be initiating a trade request. So simply entering in the coin that you wanna purchase, verifying the specific dollar amount, verifying and confirming and accepting the amount that you're gonna invest, the pricing that you're investing at, and then the fees associated with the transaction. So you'll find there's a lot of transparency with respect to the fees associated with each individual cryptocurrency transaction through the platform. So that's the three-step process. Let me peel back a few more layers of the onion in terms of the system. What's nice about this platform or system is that you don't have to manage multiple entities or keep track of multiple passwords. So you log into your equity trust account and there are layers of protocols involved in terms of making sure that it is you that is accessing that system, of course. But you don't have to manage separate wallets. You don't have to manage separate liquidity providers or exchanges. You don't have to manage the storage of the keys or the cryptocurrency. All of that is fully integrated within the equity trust system. So what we've done for you is we've assembled all of the parties, all of the entities and companies, and we've built the digital connectivity for you to be able to easily establish an account, fund an account, and then initiate a cryptocurrency transaction. Now, if you follow the link below, you'll learn more about the system, the platform, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper. You'll also see there the coin selection that is available. Now, we're always examining the coin selection and we are listening to our customers in terms of what coins, what cryptocurrency they are demanding. And then we go out to the necessary parties to try to make those coins available. So there is a variety of coins that you can choose from. Obviously, you're gonna see the big names on there, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, XRP, right? So a lot of the big coins are the big names that you commonly hear about in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, you even see Solana on there. Uh, you'll be able to transact with your self-directed traditional IRA or in a tax-free environment, Roth IRA. Okay, so in conclusion, we talked about 
the different types of accounts. And to rewind, we talked about the difference between investing in a taxable environment versus a tax-free environment. So just remember, in a taxable environment, 2014-21 IRS notice that in a taxable environment, you're subject to short-term capital gains tax or long-term capital gains tax rates, depending on when you buy and sell, the timing of buying and selling said cryptocurrency. But in a self-directed traditional IRA, Roth IRA, you either have tax deferred growth or tax free growth. In other words, the capital gains you recognize in the account is not subject to taxation. You don't have to report that income. All right. We talked about the system, some of the infrastructure and the three step process. Remember, the first step is opening and funding your self-directed IRA. And we understand that timing can be very, very critical in the crypto trading markets. And so you wanna make sure that your account is set up and funded well in advance. Keep in mind that transferring or rolling over funds from another financial institution, because as we talked about, most financial institutions are not gonna let you use their accounts and their structure to invest in cryptocurrency. So that's where equity trust as a custodian will come into play. You'll need to transfer or roll over your funds into the self-directed IRA. And keep in mind that we're at the mercy of that other financial institution as you are. So they're most likely not gonna be willing to move the money overnight. So if you wanna place a crypto transaction rather quickly, you wanna make sure your account is set up and funded well in advance. If you want more information, just click the link below. If you'd like to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our account representatives to help you through the account opening and funding process, we certainly can help you with that as well. And as I said earlier on, Keep in mind that Equity Trust, we are a custodian. What we do is allow individuals to have an account, a self-directed account, that enables them to select their own investments and really chart their own financial destiny. And so you have the ability to take control here and invest in a wide array of alternative investments, private equity, real estate, gold and silver, and then as we talked about in today's program, cryptocurrency. What we don't do is recommend specific investments, recommend allocation strategies through your diversification of your portfolio. Ultimately, we give you the tools, the education, the information so that you can make your own decision in terms of how you wanna allocate your retirement account portfolio. With that being said, I wanna thank everybody for joining us on today's program. Until the next one, compounding interest in the absence of taxation.